The local cycling community and others demanding changes following a deadly bicycle accident in Venice. And election officials and ca campaign observatives across Florida are gearing up for massive recounts. And the Florida Supreme Court hears arguments in a nearly decade-old education lawsuit. Your Suncoast News starts now. You're watching ABC 7 News at 6. Hello and welcome, I'm Scott Dennis. And I'm Taylor Torgano, thanks for joining us. The cycling community and many residents on the Sun Coast are now demanding change after learning one of the four bike riders hit by the, a car last week has died. The other three are still recovering from their injuries. This accident happened at the intersection of Center Road and Rockley Boulevard in Venice. ABC 7's Rebecca Fernandez joins us now live with what safety regulations they're now asking for on that busy street. Rebecca? Scott Taylor, well, state troopers have said that the driver involved in that accident is not at fault because the bike riders made an improper lane change. But residents say they are still fighting for safety changes for everyone involved. The community really supports cycling. He's in the top three of uh, distance in the whole world of 40,000 other cyclists. So he was always sort of a mentor to all of us. He taught us a lot about biking, bike safety. Barber was a close friend of Jack Harrison, one of the four bicyclists hit by a 91 year old driver in Venice last Tuesday. Harrison died this week. The other three riders are still recovering. He says all cyclists know that safety is still a big issue and all the new developments and construction have made it even more dangerous for bike riders and vehicles to share the road. And we try very hard to find paths that don't interfere with cars, but uh, this time of year we have a lot of uh, Northerners that come down, they haven't seen the construction changes going on. They're confused by the roads. Uh, our speed limits are sometimes too fast. We've got several roads that are still 45 miles an hour going back and forth between the coast and 75 that need to be reduced to 35 because there's just too much traffic on them now and there's not enough time for people to react. And that's the first thing residents are hoping to accomplish. Dozens pleaded to county commissioners at this week's meeting to change the speed limit on Center Road from 45 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour and hope that this can be done on all the roads that have bike lanes. Another cyclist who survived a separate accident on this same road hopes community leaders will remember all the accidents that have happened in the area. Statistics say that if you're hit in a car accident, a car traveling more than 40 miles an hour, you have an 85% chance of dying. God had something else for me to do. And that's maybe to straighten out this whole thing of the speed up on Center Road. Florida is a very bicycle friendly state, but not everyone knows the rules. So neighbors are also hoping some type of educational program could be implemented as well. And I know Jack would appreciate us all being safer and uh, enjoying the sport. Sarasota County Commissioners say they will discuss reducing the speed limit as well as other safety regulations at a meeting later this year. Live in Venice, Rebecca Fernandez, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Back to you guys. All right, Rebecca, thank you so much. Northport police arresting four people in a drug operation they're calling Spice Spice Baby. Investigators recovering 154 bags of synthetic cannabinoids or spice at a home on Kenwood Drive. They also found two guns and a large amount of cash. Police say the two men and two women face a wide range of charges, including possession with intent to sell and selling within a thousand feet of a place of worship. The deputies involved in a shooting earlier this week in Charlotte County could be back to work by tomorrow. During a press conference today, Sheriff Bill Prummel said the investigation is still ongoing. Early Monday morning, deputies were called to a McDonald's on Tamiami Trail in Port Charlotte, where 72-year-old George Smith of Arcadia was armed with a rifle. After arriving on scene, the sheriff's office says Smith raised his rifle at the officers, causing them to open fire. Sheriff Prummel says family of Smith told police he was depressed and talked of suicide. Once the investigation is complete, it will be turned over to the state attorney's office for review. All right, let's get a check on our weather that uh, kind of felt like summer today. Uh, this afternoon on the Sun Coast, here's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob? And that's what we're starting off with tonight. Uh, showers and thunderstorms developing along the sea breeze front, something you'd see during the summer months. And temperatures indeed got up into the upper 80s to near 90 degrees. Feels like temperature uh, was at 90 in Mayaka City, also into Arcadia, as well as into 
uh, places east of I-75. You can see those storms. They were progressing from the southeast. We have a southeast wind, and that actually is bringing in that warm, moist air. And then it hits that warm temperature over land. Upper 80s to near 90 degrees causes a few showers. And then the sea breeze kicks in and starts to fire the storms up even more so. And we're seeing that in Northport uh, near Toledo Blade Boulevard. You see now quite a bit of lightning strikes occurring with this particular cell, and it hasn't really been moving much. It'll rain itself out here pretty soon. There's another outflow boundary that's developed to the north of it, and you can see some light rain now lingering near Rotunda. That moved through Ponta Gorda earlier, uh, but down to uh, street level we go. You can see that rainfall and a few lightning strikes here near Plantation Boulevard, the South Toledo Blade Boulevard right there, and then again West Price getting some pretty heavy rainfall near North Sumter Boulevard, uh, some showers and storms along I-75. Elsewhere, uh, this line is starting to develop a little bit more so in East Manatee County. Yesterday, one of these storms that popped up in the uh, evening uh, produced over two and a half inches of rainfall estimates. So uh, you could get a little pretty, uh, a little bit of heavy rainfall there uh, north into near Mayaka City in the next half hour or so. Not much going on near the coast. All is quiet there right now. I think it'll stay that way throughout the rest of this evening. More on our weather in a few minutes. Back to you, Taylor. Thank you, Bob. The elections may have ended on Tuesday, but the ballot counts continue. There are three races right now in Florida that remain in question. The Senate race between Bill Nelson and Rick Scott has Nelson trailing by 0.22%, which could lead to a manual count. The governor's race is also in question. Andrew Gillum trails Ron DeSantis by 0.47%, which means a machine recount is mandated by law. And the third possible recount involves the race for agricultural commissioner between Nikki Freed and Matt Caldwell. Freed is leading in the count. Under state law in Florida, a recount is mandatory if the winning candidate's margin is 0.5 percentage points or less. The Florida Supreme Court today took up a legal battle about whether the state has properly carried out the voters' wishes. The 1998 constitutional amendment requires the state to provide a uniform, efficient, safe, secure, and high-quality system of public schools. In a case that has lasted nearly a decade now, plaintiffs suggest the legislature has not properly funded education in Florida. Attorney Jody Siegel with the group Citizens for Strong Schools asked the Supreme Court to overturn a decision by an appeals court that rejected the lawsuit. All children is uh, kids that come from poverty, kids that um, are a racial minority, kids with disabilities. And if you look at the statistics and disaggregate, there are significant populations that have um, just great disparities and they're not achieving. Plaintiffs are also challenging the constitutionality of two popular school voucher programs which pay for more than 100,000 kids to attend private schools. Voters Tuesday gave convicted felons back the right to vote after they have completed their sentence. This change goes into effect immediately, but doesn't include felons convicted of murder or sexual offenses. 64% of people at the polls Tuesday voted for this change. One local man who has just been granted back his right to vote says this is a bipartisan issue, but shows Floridians believe in giving people second chances. The people of Florida said loudly, that even though you may not be able to forget this legally, we are willing to forgive at least a little bit and allow you this opportunity to participate in civic life. Prior to this change, Florida was just one of four states that didn't automatically restore felons the right to vote after completing their sentence. Still to come tonight in your Suncoast News, renting a home full of mold or insects is a scary reality for some. Coming up, why landlords are falling short on fixing the problems. And what's causing an, a decline in the number of butterflies in Florida? What new research is telling us could be the culprit. Be a hard walk hero. I'm Scott Dennis. Join ABC7 and the American Heart Association for the 2018 Suncoast Heart Walk. It's Saturday, November 10th at J.D. Hamill Park. Walk with us to help raise funds to fight heart disease and stroke. Your support will help us advance life-saving breakthroughs that will keep more hearts beating. We can't save lives without your help. Register for free and walk with us to have fun and help hearts. For more information, visit suncoastheartwalk.org. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. 
Our overall experience working with California Closets was phenomenal. Calm, reassuring. Through happenstance, we ended up paired with our designer, Jen. She was someone who not only was patient, someone who was professional. She's become extended family. She had great insight to help direct me towards those things that could make our dreams come true. We are the Greens, and this is our California Closet story. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. You know, fortunately, this was my first job out of college. So I was able to uh, come back home and work in my hometown. I wore two hats. I was sports director and I was a news anchor. Uh, I did that for a few years and then decided to go full time into news. Well, I love our team here at ABC7. We have a great mix and it really is a great mix of, of personalities, of experience that meshes really well into a really strong team. I'm Scott Dennis and I'm here for you. Thousands of Americans live in unsafe and unsanitary homes with mice, mold, and lead paint. They don't have the money to fix the problems, and neither does the landlord. Lee Zurich investigates. The air conditioner from upstairs on our unit leaks. I get all the water. Karen Angelin pays $400 a month in rent. You look up there. Oh, yeah. I don't know what I'm growing out What's my up? ceiling. Her landlord can't here, seem to stop the vine house. growing from her bedroom ceiling. Does it grow back? Yes, it grows back. On a dangerously hot and humid South Louisiana afternoon, Angeline yeah. struggles for relief. There's no way you could cool these rooms because there's no unit. And that room is on the side of a hot water heater, so that was even hotter. Without AC, she bought window units, but her landlord only allows her to keep two in her three-bedroom apartment. We take care of them as much as we can, but we found the units. They're so old, we can't update them ourselves. Her landlord, the federal government. Angelin lives in a public housing development. Last year, a HUD inspector gave her complex a failing inspection score of 43 out of 100. That C means inspectors found life-threatening deficiencies. Among the serious findings, damaged roofs, exposed wires, and other electrical hazards. Investigate TV analyzed federal records and found hundreds of public housing complexes across the country that year after year failed inspections. One reason why a $50 billion backlog of needed repairs. It's appalling and it's unacceptable. People shouldn't have to live that way, especially when the federal government is supporting that housing. We found housing complexes from Alabama to Virginia, the Carolinas to Indiana, nearly every state, people living in deplorable conditions with bugs and mice without smoke detectors or working windows. In the last decade, Investigate TV found 365 housing complexes across the country have failed at least half of their inspections. A score under 60 is considered failing. Much of public housing is, is, is for disabled people and the elderly and we just don't invest the way we should as a country. Sandra Stipe pays $363 a month in rent. Every flush of her unit's only toilet is a bizarre two-step process. The only way the toilet fills up is if you turn the sink on. Otherwise, what happens? It don't flush. Unless Congress decides to invest, thousands of Americans will continue to live like this. Units intended to help many of the elderly, disabled, and working poor, some built nearly 80 years ago. 
pictures you may see in a third world country, instead in our communities and government owned properties, the result of years of underfunding and neglect. For the first time in eight years, Congress increased the amount of money to be spent on public housing repairs. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development was given $2.6 billion for capital expenses. That amounts to about $2,600 per unit. Yeah, big problem. All right, let's talk about our weather and uh, summer seems to be back in yeah, November. It huh? is. Uh, thunderstorms uh, taking place now along the sea breeze front. Temperatures today, upper 80s to near 90. August. Uh, here we are in November. No, it's uh, it's not. Uh, we are looking at uh, nice weather on the beaches. Uh, the the uh, sea breeze is well inland, so we don't anticipate any kind of rainfall there. We had uh, the sunset already, obviously, but a gorgeous one it was. And uh, some crepuscular rays there on the right side of your screen. And Norm, got a shot of those uh, looking out over Sarasota Bay. There they are. What it is is the sun actually goes below the horizon. There may be a storm off in the Gulf, and that casts the shadow on these uh, clouds that you see right there, or at least the sky, and causes those blue rays. And as far as the Titan radar picture goes, look at the snow in Kansas City, also into Missouri, and that is some colder air that'll start to settle our way on the weekend. It's not going to be a cold snap. It'll be uh, back down to more seasonal averages or slightly above that, but nothing uh, into the upper 80s. We'll see the low 80s for definite. Uh, uh, the stationary front staying to our north now. And it looks as though that front uh, will stay there and eventually fade away before the weak cold front moves due, uh, through on Saturday morning. Right now, some heavier showers along that frontal boundary to our north today from uh, Jacksonville southward down to near Gainesville. But as I mentioned, we do have some afternoon showers and some thunderstorms. This is a typical setup in summer. We have the sea breeze develop. We had the southeasterly wind flow around the area of high pressure. The two met and uh, really started to bring some heavy rainfall near Northport, although that's starting to wind down. It's been there for over 45 minutes in some places, and you can see those lightning strikes now starting to generate to the north in this cell as the outflow boundary has uh, generated some other showers and storms. So still raining near Northport, near US 41, and uh, near West Price Boulevard. This rain will come to an end here in the next, uh, I would say, half hour before it's all said and done. Still, uh, this one's starting to build a little bit more so, and it uh, looks like that uh, light rainfall will continue there in Northport for the next, uh, as I said, half hour or so. Not much is going to make it to the coastline as that sea breeze will kind of use everything up uh, to the east of our area, uh, at least the immediate coastline. 80 degrees right now, the Gulf water temperature. Temperatures all pretty much in the uh, low 80s inland, upper 70s near the beaches. The weather headlines read like this, staying warm through Friday. Another day tomorrow, mid to upper 80s with a feels like temperature, at least inland near 90 degrees. And then a weak cold front moves through Saturday morning early, cools us down, dries us out a little bit. You'll notice the dew point temperature coming down just a little bit, but the next front will be a stronger one and looks like it'll cool things down Wednesday and Thursday. We'll see high temperatures below average on those days. You'll see that in the seven day forecast. So tomorrow, mid 80s for highs, partly cloudy skies and uh, just a slight chance for a late day shower. You can see that in the future cast showing that southeasterly wind flow around that area of high pressure off the coast there. Here comes the cold front by Friday evening. It'll be over the panhandle for us. Looks like moving through sometime in the morning, I would say right around sunrise and a thin band of showers are possible, but not a lot of rainfall. That front settles just to the south of us and keeps us um, mild over the weekend. 79 right now, northwest winds are at 6, and the barometer is falling slightly. Yes, that's me right there. That's uh, nice, isn't it? Brian Wigglesworth made that. The ABC out there at Siesta Key, and we'll have a high of 88 degrees today. I'm honored. I'm a sand sculptor. Uh, 80 degrees uh, for a, a normal high, so we'll be 8 degrees above that tomorrow again. So we were close to a record. 90 is the record, so 2 degrees off from a record high today. A GFS forecast model showing pretty good weekend ahead, and then we'll see some clouds and showers, as I said, next Tuesday and Wednesday, and that's when that colder air will start to settle down. So as far as the forecast goes, for boaters tomorrow, winds out of the southeast turning to the west. We'll have a light chop. Seas running two feet or less really out there. And as far as the seven-day forecast goes, we are looking at basically a slight chance for showers over the next couple of days at 20 percent. The better chance Tuesday, and it's not all that great, but notice the cooler temperatures come Wednesday and Thursday, low to mid-70s. Lows will be into the mid-50s on Thursday and looks good for the Crystal Classic on Siesta Key. Uh, which takes place tomorrow and goes through uh, the weekend. Back to you. And your
likeness in sand. That's really cool, Bob. American Airlines volunteers packing up 5,000 boxes of food for Florida communities affected by Hurricane Michael. Airline workers gathering today at one of the airline's hangars at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Workers packing 75,000 pounds of food there. American Airlines teams have met at airports in Charlotte, North Carolina and Miami to pack food with Feeding America and thousands of hygiene comfort kits with the American Red Cross. New research shows the number of butterflies and caterpillars in North Florida has been declining substantially over the last decade or so. The University of Florida study says the number has declined by 80 percent since 2005. Researchers believe two major factors could be responsible. Milkweed is the favorite food of young monarchs and its availability has been sharply reduced by development and by a herbicide widely used in agriculture to kill weeds. Still ahead on your Suncoast News tonight. We'll tell you where you can lend a helping hand to help feed the hungry and enjoy a hot meal of your own at the same time. Tonight, David Muir on the scene. College students targeted, 12 dead. The latest on the gunman, a former Marine and his weapon. And the hero officer killed just before his retirement. World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. Enjoy fine wine and great foods, all while supporting a great cause. It's the 17th annual Suncoast Food and Wine Fest, happening Saturday, November 10th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Premier Sports Campus in Lakewood Ranch. Taste hundreds of wines from around the world and sample great food from the area's finest restaurants. All proceeds go to local charities and rotary projects. For tickets and information, visit SuncoastFoodandWineFest.com. Blue 32, Blue 32, ha ha! It's the Ghetto Gridiron Challenge. The game's on to sell 2,000 vehicles. 12 teams compete for the number one spot. Score a great deal at every Ghetto dealership. Buy with zero down. Make no payments for 90 days. Choose from 14 of your favorite brands all on sale. Who will make it to the end zone? You decide. Rush to a Ghetto location near you or visit Ghetto.com. Ghetto's got it. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. You now have the power to prioritize your Facebook feed and get local news and information from the team you trust. Go to the ABC7 Sarasota page on Facebook. Give us a like, then click following and choose see first. That's it. Customize even more by choosing notifications. Choose breaking news, posts, live videos, anything you want to see in real time. Take control of your news feed and stay connected to what's happening in your community with ABC7 on Facebook. Find out first at 4 with ABC7 News at 4. 
first alert weather, breaking news, live updates, traffic hotspots, all at a new, more convenient time. Find out first at 4, weekdays on ABC7. The soup was flowing and the bowls were filled to the rim today at the annual Empty Bowls fundraiser, serving up good food for a great cause. Restaurants from all across the Sun Coast, providing a variety of soups for those in attendance to pick from. All money raised at the event goes to the Food Bank of Manatee, which helps families in need in our community. Organizers say that need is a big concern locally, which is why events like this are so important. And especially right now with what's happened with Red Tide, we've had a lot of people in the hospitality industry that um, have been coming to our pantries to get some assistance. So it's still a critical need in Manatee County. And if you missed today's event, don't fret. Tomorrow, Empty Bowls will be on Main Street in Lakewood Ranch. Admission is $30. You get to keep the bowl. They have all been uh, decorated and uh, take that home with you, but mm -hmm. fill it up first with some delicious soup. At this it's event. a great event, too, yeah. and it should be okay weather-wise for that. And Red Tide, speaking of that, is still a problem in the area of beaches. We get the full report again tomorrow to see how right. it's going. But uh, for uh, the beach event, Crystal Classic, things are going okay out there. I can't wait to see your, your likeness. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's funny. World News Tonight with David Muir is next. We'll see you again at 11. Good night. Picking out a new ceiling fan? That's a do-it-yourself. Installing your new ceiling fan? No. That's a don't do-it-yourself. For ceiling fans, rewires, or anything electrical, play it safe. And call on the trained electricians from your locally owned Mr. Sparky. It's no accident that so many of our customers are repeat customers. You Trust Mr. Sparky for all your electrical repairs. Rugs as Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. Christmas traditions by Lux Art Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas traditions by Lux Art Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. There are lots of people who are confused about which Medicare plan is right for them. Hey, that's me. I barely know where to start. Well, start here with me, Karen. I'm a licensed Humana sales agent. Well, it's nice to meet you, Karen. I'm John Smith. Hi, John. At Humana, we know you're unique, so you have different needs from other John Smiths. Yeah, I've always thought so. And together, we can find a plan that's right for you. Great. I go to the doctor a couple of times a year and I have some prescriptions, but I'm never fully sure of what's covered and what's not. With Humana's all-in-one Medicare Advantage plans, you get coverage for hospital stays, doctor visits, and Part D prescription drug benefits, all for an affordable and sometimes no monthly plan premium. Do you have any more information? Sure, I'll get a decision guide in the mail to you today. They're free. Finally, someone who understands the real me. Your health and happiness is important to us. Call or go online now to get your free decision guide. Call a licensed Humana sales agent today. Hunger is a growing problem in our area, and a huge number of Suncoast residents are suffering in silence. It could be your coworker, your child's classmate, or your friend fighting to secure their next meal. But you can help. ABC7 is partnering with local organizations to help feed the Suncoast. Go to mysuncoast.com slash hunger to join the fight. Help us. Help the hungry. My California classes experience has been wonderful. My mother's a huge inspiration. Before she passed away, she would say, you should do something special for yourself. First time I saw my closet, I immediately thought, this is the best thing I've ever done for myself. I call it my Tiffany style closet. I mean, I can shop in my own closet every day. I love that. 
My name is Cynthia, and this is my California Closet story. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7. That's a positive because the Fed says, okay, economies are good, people are making good money, and we can afford to raise the rates and not disrupt too much. For the first time in a decade, interest rates are on the rise. How can this affect you, your family, and your house? I'm Alan Cohn, Will Nickel and Diamond at the Trapezoid. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you.